I spent the past 48 hours doing every boss fight I can, testing every single loadout that you could possibly think of to find the best way to farm the jungle boss. Now this new jungle boss fight is actually a really good loot dropping event as it actually pays you in a few ways that you might have forgotten about. And if you follow the method that I'm about to show you in this video, you can farm this boss over and over again and get thousands of seashells. In this update especially, it is so important that you are doing all of the right things to farm this boss as quickly as possible so you have time to move on to another boss and keep farming. Any slowdowns that you have are just going to stop you from being able to farm another boss and going to slow down your overall profit in general. In this video, I will be showing you all of the loadouts that you could pretty much possibly use as well as some other tips for making a ton of diamonds this update. So let's get right into it. All right, you guys. So just a little overview on why this boss actually is so good. The first of the ways is that it actually is pretty much the best place to get these seashells especially if you do the method that I'm about to show you. And the second way actually feeds into this because if you didn't know, the current global event actually has you collecting these seashells. So the more of those seashells that you actually collect, the more of these global event gift bags that you can get and you can use those to either open or just sell them in general for 2 million each and you get multiple of these throughout the event. So for that reason is why these seashells are so important. They actually feed into a lot of stuff in this update so it's really important that you do this method the right way. And then finally of course just by grinding these bosses you do have the chance to get the huge pineapple monkey. Now I've heard a lot of rumors that the actual odds to get this huge from the boss fight itself are super rare but i haven't seen the odds for myself so i can't really tell you guys whether or not it's good for actually getting the huge but honestly on top of all of that the seashells you get you can use to actually craft the summer gifts which actually have a super high chance to get the huge. I believe it's like a 1 in 350 chance to get the huge from those summer gifts. And if you were on the game and farming these seashells using this method that I'm about to show you, you could craft a ton of gifts and you are pretty much guaranteed to get at least one huge from doing so. Now really quickly before I actually get into the build and show you guys it in action, if you guys could quickly subscribe to my channel, I'm pushing to be a partner with big games. So every subscription right now really helps out. Now, a lot of people are trying to use that last setup that I gave you to farm the police chest to actually farm this boss. And while that method actually does work pretty decent, like you can farm the boss pretty quick with this setup. I have a much better setup that I'm about to show you. Now, the reason why this setup actually doesn't work as well this update is because this boss fight actually has all of those chests that spawn around the boss itself. And this build was pretty much just good for doing the max amount of damage to one single breakable. So this time around, we actually need to be able to do a lot of damage to the chest surrounding the boss as well as the boss itself. So for that reason is why this is just no longer the best setup that you can use. Instead, the setup that you should be using is actually this one. And I know this build looks absolutely crazy. It's probably not what you expected, but trust me, I spent an unnecessary amount of time testing this out. And for some reason, this is the fastest build that I could come up with. And really quickly with these timed events, it is so hard to get consistent testing because you can't just sit down and do a bunch of tests back to back to back. You have to wait every four hours after doing a few tests. So compared to something like the police chest, I was able to basically just sit down for a few hours and just constantly test different setups as opposed to this which took me a couple days because I had to wait every four hours to do additional testing so if you guys could just give the video a like it would help me out a lot but thankfully anyways this should be a permanent world so hopefully you guys can use this guide for a long time coming now keep in mind with this build I actually did empower three of these enchants so I empowered one strong pets nine one criticals nine and one tap power nine and by doing this you should pretty much be able to hit the enchant cap for all three of these and trust me you are able to do a ton of damage by doing this. On top of these three using the corruption enchant just multiplies all of the damage that this thing actually adds which is truly why this build does so good I definitely suggest using this corruption book still and then because we were able to empower these three we basically had an extra slot to add this fruity which just adds an additional boost to all of the fruits that we're already eating constantly 
And then this chest breaker enchant helps to destroy those chests on the outside, which is really good. So definitely something that benefits this build. And that's pretty much it. It's actually kind of less expensive because you don't have to buy a bunch of these nightmare orbs like last time. All of these enchants are relatively cheap. And if you don't want to go ahead and empower each of these enchants every eight hours, you could just go ahead and use more of these books and don't use the fruity as well as the chest breaker. So I would just use the corruption and then as many of these books as you can. I would just make sure you're at least using three of the tap powers so you are reaching that limit. But it is time for me to show you guys this build in action. So I'll see you guys in a second inside the boss fight. All right, so we're heading into the boss fight. The corruption enchant actually helps out a lot here. So when this procs three times, you do a ton of damage to this boss. Now, as you can see with this build, I am absolutely melting this guy. With this build, I can pretty much consistently get under two minutes in destroying these bosses, which you're definitely going to need. Now, the reason I unspawn my pets and make them come back out is because they often get stuck here trying to fight the boss. And in order for the boss to come back out, you actually need to farm all of the breakables around. So it's really important that you do that so you can quickly go through all of the breakables and continue fighting this boss. Remember that with this method, speed is key because we are going to be fighting and destroying multiples of these bosses every four hours. And that is the key to making a ton of diamonds here. And then remember, if your pets get stuck, you can unspawn them and bring them back out and it will help out a lot to destroy these outside chests. Now, as you can see with this build, I pretty much destroyed these chests in like two seconds, maybe. Now, the only thing I should mention is that using that nightmare or build, you actually do destroy the outside chests quicker than this build. But the difference is that I do a ton more damage to the boss by using this build, which I think speeds up the process by a ton. So by being able to destroy these outside chests in pretty much the same time and then destroy the main boss much quicker, I think is the fastest way to actually do this. This is exactly what you're going to need to do in order to farm multiple of these bosses in a row. Try to avoid the TNT, but as you can see, we are almost done. It's just under two minutes, I think right now all right so once you destroy that boss you can see i got a ton of the seashells and a bunch of other item drops what you're going to want to do is immediately leave the game as quickly as possible hopefully you don't get signed out of roblox like i just did and then log back into the game and just join a random server now you're going to want to do this as quickly as possible because the longer you wait the harder it is to actually find the bosses and then obviously just tp right to the bosses immediately Go over here and try to destroy it. See, I got really lucky here, but most of the time there are people farming the boss already. We are only four minutes into the boss fight being out, so it's not too surprising. But the quicker you could server hop into a new server, the quicker you can keep farming these bosses. I think I can usually farm like eight to nine bosses before I, it just gets way too hard to find a boss in a server. But this is really the way. I honestly should be checking how much shells I have just so I could show you. Right now I have 20,400 on me. So hopefully by the end of the video I could show you how much I've earned from doing this. Not including these first two boss fights because I forgot to check. Oh my gosh, I forgot to mention. Actually one of the most important parts of this build is actually this pet surge. Pet surge is so good for this and I'll show you why in a second. I totally forgot to show you. This actually speeds up the process by a ton. Basically if you use the pet surge it helps you to get more corrupt procs because it actually makes your pets hit the breakable quicker so by hitting the breakable quicker you can basically get more corruption proccing and it, honestly you just do a ton more damage so we left the game and we're about to server hop again and try to find another boss now something that does help when you're server hopping is to just go ahead and block a random player in your server just in case so you don't accidentally get put into the same server right away i believe this is our third one so not too bad we're moving at a decent pace Obviously, I messed up there, so we were a little bit slower than we could have. But as you can see, when I'm farming, look how fast the pet surge goes up. I'm telling you guys, this ultimate is definitely what you're going to want to use for this boss fight. It is honestly just so good. I would just make sure once you get it to save it for the boss itself, especially if you have corruption, because using it on the boss makes the boss like just die. It's pretty much just die. Like if I used it when it jumped down right there, it probably would have like instantly died. But there we go. That's our third boss let's keep moving forward all right so i got onto the server but i could see that there is a lot of people here fighting this boss 
This is what you really don't want. Honestly, getting into a server with the least amount of people is what you want because the more damage that other people do to these breakables, the less amount of drops that you actually get. So by doing this event with other people, you're actually losing out on drops yourself. So just a, a little warning there. I just absolutely shred through this guy and usually I get some corruption procs so I don't know why I'm not getting it right now. Maybe it's just because of all the different people hitting it. So that was our fourth one. Let's keep going and to try to find a new server. All right, so this one looks like it's actually unfought, which is perfect. Yeah, look at this. This is exactly what you want. Just a boss that you can fight by yourself gets you so much more loot. So if you get lucky and you get like seven or eight of these boss fights, then you're going to make absolute bang. And I'd say that usually takes you around 30 minutes to be able to destroy those eight bosses. So if you can do that and make that much diamonds, it is actually really good. But yeah, here's another example of me using the pet search here. Hopefully we can get some corruption procs, which actually speeds up the damage so much. The more corruption you can get on that boss is why I definitely see suggest using the pet surge on him and not these outside chests and if your pets do get stuck just make sure you equip them and unequip them and they should come back to help you fight these chests as well as that i do use a auto clicker on one millisecond clicking just to get as many procs as possible on this chest i think it definitely helps but it is a little annoying sometimes especially if you have to unequip and equip your pets over and over again definitely something you should try out but doing this method is just way too good i can't suggest you guys to do anything else Else but use this method as you can see with that pet surge i proc to the corruption three times like almost right away when that happens you can go through these chests so fast and i believe that was our fifth boss and it is currently 15 minutes past when the boss actually came out so we are currently on schedule to be doing this basically every three minutes a boss which is pretty good this is probably what you want to shoot for is just getting a boss fought every three minutes which basically means if you do this for 30 minutes you should be able to kill at least 10 bosses and the amount of loot drops that you actually get really depends on how lucky you get with the servers and how many bosses you get that are unfought. Like right now, I just got pretty unlucky. I think I did like four servers in a row that I didn't get a boss fight, but trust me, just keep going. There are a ton of servers where people are just AFK and nobody's actually fighting the boss. So those are great opportunities to get a ton of diamonds by killing it. All right, so we got caught in a loading screen of death. So we did waste a lot of time there and that definitely doesn't help. But I think this will probably be the last boss fight I'll show you. I think you guys understand that this build is pretty good. Now, if you're even quicker than me at leaving and joining servers and doing all this stuff and actually equipping your ultimate that you want to use, then you could actually fly through these and usually get around eight to nine bosses done within the 30 minute period. Now, I believe that was our sixth boss and it's only been 20 minutes into the boss fight. So now another thing I definitely suggest if you are doing this boss fight, make sure you get this player upgrade that is over here on the Tiki Island. I know a lot of players have definitely forgotten about this, but there's actually a pet damage upgrade, which gives you a 5% bonus damage overall, which is very good. This is pretty significant. So make sure you come get this. It's just up here on the Tiki Island. Now, I am sorry it did take me this long for this video to come out, but I am a little bit sick, so I'm running a little slow, so sorry about that. But I really just wanted to make sure that this build was truly the best, and I can truly say from my experience that I think it is. As I was saying before, if you don't have this amount of slots, I'd probably remove this fruity enchant first, and then second, probably this chest breaker. And then after that would probably be the Strong Pets book. Just make sure if you aren't empowering one of these tap power books that you do have a third tap power book because that's going to enable you to do the most amount of damage by tapping, especially if you are using an auto clicker with corruption. All of these things come together for you to be able to farm this boss just that much quicker. By doing this method, you are going to get so many of these global gifts as well as the seashells that come with it. So you're going to be able to basically make as many summer gifts as you want. We could also potentially see these seashells be part of the clan battle next week. So a build like this might be very important when that update comes out. Remember to subscribe to help me push towards partner. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and peace out.